I'm certainly no stranger to lack of sleep. But I do wonder what the consequences of that are. Just how bad is it for my body and brain when I don't get enough? To find out, I'm going to take part in an extreme sleep deprivation experiment. Sleep deprivation begins now. I can't even pronounce sleep deprivation. That's how deprived I am. Let's do it. Oh, good start. Hi, guys. Hi, Lawrence. I'm Ginny. Hi, Welcome Ginny. to the Monash Sleep Lab. Uh, I'm Lawrence, hello. Um, Hi. Please come through. So this is where the magic happens. This is our control room, indeed. Under the watchful eye of researchers from Monash's Sleep and Circadian Medicine Lab, my executive suite. This is it. Come through. I'm going to spend the next 24 hours awake inside this room with no windows and no way to tell the time. I'm not allowed to give you any time cues, so I will take your phone off you. The Monash team are particularly interested in what will happen to my sleep-deprived brain. I feel sleep-deprived quite a lot in my normal everyday life. I really want to know what's going on in my head. Ooh! Yow! Sleep affects a variety of functions, our cognitive functions, our mood, and our physiology. I think Lawrence is going to be quite surprised at how impacted he is through sleep deprivation. At regular intervals, I have to complete tasks designed to carefully monitor any changes in my brain or body function. There's an ocular motor test to see how my vision responds. You practice visually guided, so just follow the green cross with your eyes. Reaction time tests to assess my motor control. First time I've done that. And a drowsiness test, where after staring at a circle, trying not to blink for three minutes, I have to close my eyes for two minutes while trying not to fall asleep. ahead, I'm challenging myself to write some new jokes. There's still a lot of blank pages to go in this book. And straight after this experiment, I'm going to perform this new material in front of a hundred people at a stand-up comedy club. Because extreme sleep deprivation isn't enough on its own. Now I, I surely shouldn't flinch anymore because, you know, I'm used to it. Oh! <laughs> you were meant to count down! With no clocks and no sleep for what feels like an eternity, I'm really struggling with tiredness. I can't concentrate. <sighs> Is this a bigger circle than usual? This is a classic symptom of sleep deprivation, and we see it's one of the earliest cognitive indicators of impaired performance due to sleep deprivation. As the brain becomes more sleep deprived, it craves distraction, it seeks stimuli, to try and keep itself awake. I've got another way to wake you up. How? It's time for another finger prick. Oh, <laughs> you. <laughs> but there's no end in sight, and the tests keep coming. Hello, circle, my old friend. Oh, oh, the double vision's here again. Oh, God. How am I going to do this gig tonight? <sighs> so at this point in the study, Lawrence's drive for sleep is so high that he involuntarily lapses into periods of microsleep. He may not even be aware that he's fallen asleep. And in fact, his eyes may even be open during these periods of microsleep. Oh my God, did I have a, I had a microsleep. The urge to sleep is now becoming overwhelming. 
Struggling to stay awake, that's what's happening. How are you feeling? Oh, that was really hard. Yeah. I was just trying to stay awake and I knew I was going to fall asleep. So I think um, my way to compensate was to have an emotional affect. That's understandable. Um, yeah. Like, it was that sense of helplessness. Yeah, I, I, th I knew I couldn't uh, do it, so. You got through it? Yeah. Here you go, Lawrence. Uh, what do you feel like eating? Oh, hash browns. As time continues to tick by, food takes the edge off the tiredness. Maybe a milkshake later. But suddenly, it's all over. All right, mate, you're out. <laughs> yes. You're free. Thank you. Oh, my God. I'm Light of day. free. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> what time is it? <sighs> yeah. Sunlight. That sweet vitamin D. I'd love to go to bed, but I've got a gig in a couple of hours' time. <sighs> I've been awake for over 40 hours. I can't believe I'm still standing. And I'm finding it hard to remember the jokes that I wrote half asleep in the lab. This could be the toughest performance of my life. Still feeling very sleep deprived, it's time to find out how I did. All right, so break it to me. How do I actually go? Well, it's interesting, actually. Some of the tests we gave you, you did just fine on. Other tests we gave you, you kind of fell apart a little bit. <laughs> um, and I know that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What was I good at and what was I bad at? You were a bit bad at attention, um, which is probably the most common thing that goes wrong. You were also bad at um, inhibition. So I don't know if you remember this test where you were um, responding to things on the screen, pushing a button very quickly lots of times, but then every now and again you had to stop yourself from yeah. pushing a button. You, it became very hard for you to stop yourself when you were sleep deprived. Um, I was feeling some strange emotions as well. I felt like I was about to nod off and it became this almost willpower mind game to try to stay awake and then all of a sudden I spontaneously started crying. One of the things that we find is that our uh, ability to process emotions and our reaction to various emotions and our emotional reaction to things going on around us gets altered when you're sleep deprived and we become more emotionally reactive. So you react quicker and more strongly than you might if you've had a good night of sleep. The other thing which was interesting was um, at the very end of this 40, 43 hour sleep deprivation experiment, I did a stand up comedy gig in front of about 100 people. The anxiety that I was building up came across as me talking really fast on stage. Stop comedy, make some noise! Sometimes people become sort of euphoric and happy and giddy when they're sleep deprived, almost hypomanic. The more common response, though, is that the negative emotions become very strong. So people become depressed, dysphoric, or even anxious and fearful when they're sleep deprived. So you went through a very extreme sleep deprivation, but what we know is almost everything you experience from the emotion to the attention to the decision making and cognitive deficits, all of that can happen if all you do is reduce your sleep by just a couple hours a night for, say, a week. It's astonishing. The cumulative effect of missing just two hours of sleep a night is as bad for you as going without it for nearly two days. It's clear to me now yeah. that making sure you get enough sleep is vital if you want to perform at your best. In fact, if you want to perform at all. 